gold. People seem to have been fascinated by it since day one. Archaeologists have found Egyptians using it in their ornamentation, it has been used as currency, and modern humans use it as jewelry. But what is it? Elemental gold is a transitional metal. Some of its properties include malleability, it's ductile, and it conducts electricity very well. It is also a noble metal, making it resistant to corrosion. This makes it ideal for a variety of uses. It is so popular that it led to many exploration missions and was the cause of a major boom in California during the California Gold Rush. The California Gold Rush started when James Marshall of New Jersey hired John Sutter, a German-born Swiss pioneer, to oversee the construction and operation of a sawmill near present-day Sacramento. The back portion of the mill to drain water was too narrow, so to protect workers, it was only used at night and inspected every morning. On the morning of January 24, 1848, while checking the mill, gold was found. But unsure of what he had found, Marshall ran a few tests and confirmed it was indeed gold. And the rest, as they say, is history. The mother load and primary location of the gold rush is located in the western Sierra Nevada foothills. So why did it happen in this particular region? because this is an area rich in placer deposits found in tertiary gravels. What are placer deposits? Placer gold is defined as a surficial mineral deposit formed by mechanical concentration of mineral particles from weathered debris. Because of its high density, gold is deposited at certain points in river systems where the energy of water decreases rapidly the water can no longer support, support the heavy gold and it settles. These points include bends in rivers and areas directly below waterfalls. These types of deposits make stream bed mining ideal and it's the type of mining that individual prospectors would use when they first came to California it involves gold panning and water from the river, but placer gold deposits were not only found in Northern California. There was a mini gold rush in Southern California as well, and it took place right here in San Bernardino County. In 1860, the Holcomb Valley in San Bernardino Mountains became famous after William H. Holcomb discovered placer gold deposits. Holcomb Valley became the site of the largest gold rush in Southern California. At the time, the area also became the largest town in San Bernardino County with a population of about 1,500. Today, mining activity still continues in the area with hobbyists having about 2,000 claims to the land. Although gold seemed like a wild adventure, drawing in thousands of people, hoping to hit it rich, mining practices such as hydraulic pumping became extremely harmful to the environment and human well being. Gold mining locations adjacent to waterways were ideal as they often came with water rights. Unfortunately, these areas were subject to the most damage as the Sacramento Valley was flooded with mining waste there was enough debris that some fields were covered with material up to three feet deep. Farmers downriver protested for many years, eventually forming the Anti-Debris Association of Sacramento Valley. In 1882, in the 1882 case, Woodruff versus North Bloomingfield Gravel and Mining Company, the courts decided that hydraulic mining itself was not illegal. However, dumping tailings in the river system was. Courts went on to say that if hydraulic mines wish to continue their operations, they must find ways to store the debris on their land. This ruling was devastating to the mining industry, causing many operations to shut down. 
because many did not have enough capital to install the necessary infrastructure to store mine tailings. In a landmark publication by the USGS, Grove Carl Gilbert outlined the environmental impact that hydraulic mining had on the water systems of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Based on field work conducted in 1905 to 1908, Gilbert estimated that it would take roughly 50 years of stream processes to return the landscape to normal. Clearly, that is not the case, and new estimates suggest that we will see a clearing of all remaining debris around the year 3000. Fortunately, the Clean Water Act was passed in 1972, and it established the basic structure for regulating discharge of pollutants in the waters of the United States and regulating quality standards for surface water. This has helped regulate the amount of pollutants miners are allowed to dump into our waterways, keeping us safe from harmful carcinogens, and also demonstrates the importance of the EPA and environmental laws.